Hi, I'm Nick Stabile, I'm the Vice President of Sales and Marketing for Rat Pack Dimmers, and today I'm going to have Bobby DeCellis in our media center. We are going to respect and um, honor the, the COVID situation that we're in right now. Both of us will be wearing a mask, so please be patient with that. And Rat Pack hopes that all of you are out there safe and healthy, and I hope you enjoy my sit down with Bobby DeCellis. Bobby DeCellis, thank you so much for joining us today at Rat Pack Dimmers. You have been a huge advocate of what we've been doing here. You're on the advisory committee. We think nothing but wonderful things about you and what you're up to in the world. Tell us, what are you working on right now? What's happening with Bobby? Uh, currently, I am working on a show I can't talk about, but uh -huh. I did just finish uh, Mandalorian Season 2, <laughs> which has premiered. And we're working on something. It's related, is all I can say. I can't I say what else it is. Understood. Does it have lightsabers and big spaceships? Well, yeah. And if you saw the last episode of Mandalorian Season 2, it, it kind of uh, teases it a little bit. I see. Yeah. Good. Yeah. And, and Mandalorian has been sort of a testing ground for Rat Pack and for Unity Box because as we've been developing the product with your input, we've, we've given you demos and things to use and things have failed and things have worked great. And tell us about that process. Yeah, uh, I chose you on my head, I apologize. No, it's all right. Um, no, I mean, it's, it's been great. You know, we're really, I think, pushing a lot of envelopes on the show. And, and Jeff Webster, my gaffer, likes to push the envelope, which is why he, like, I'm, a lot, I'm able to do it. But, you, you know, it's, it's a whole new way of lighting. He doesn't use a single uh, tungsten head at all. Every light he uses takes data and, uh, you know, it's a challenge because there isn't really an infrastructure built to do that. So we kind of have to make it up as we go. And uh, these products uh, have been instrumental in, in making that network happen. So every single light, including your practicals, are using everything. A data hungry fixture. Yes. Like an, like an Astera bulb or what? Uh, so we've got, you know, we've got like your ribbon, the stereo bulbs, sky panels, cineo lights. I mean, we run the full gamut. So, you know, and we have lights that are everywhere from six channels to a full universe. And what's a full universe? Like an Astera 2 pixel mapped or what? Yeah, uh, we are uh, sky panel, 360 is a big one. We like to do interactive light with that. So that's a full universe per head. Right. Um, and I'm trying to think, uh, so some of these movers we've been using. Okay. Uh, and uh, these new pixel panels that are coming out, which I don't know if people have seen them yet, but I actually believe you guys helped develop them. Oh, root pixels. Yeah, root pixels. Yeah, so absolutely. We're, root using, pixels. we're using those next week, so yeah. You're gonna love that. Mike Kelly, dear friend, mm -hmm. super talented guy. Root pixel is a very data hungry fixture. Yes. <laughs> right? Yes, I need to, I had to get more lighting processors just to handle one set, but yeah. Like one of his panels is like, I don't know, four universes, something I, like that? I think they're about four universes a panel. Wow. Yeah. That's enormous. It's a lot, yes. It's, I mean, this was crazy, you know, unheard of. My dad was a ring gaffer. Mm -hmm. Did a lot of big shows back in the day, and, you know, this kind of stuff blows his mind. You know, he did, right. the biggest shows ever back then had one universe of DMX, maybe two. Right. You know, and now, you know, we eat that up in seconds. So, when you're talking about your infrastructure on set, you originally, I remember months and months and months ago, we're talking about Mandalorian and how you would implement Unity Box. And you were using Unity Box, but then Datasphere came out, which was Unity Box's little brother, and that was something that sort of changed your ratio between Unity and Datasphere. Let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah, so, you know, because we don't have any tungsten lights on our show, the dimming capabilities were less important to me on the Unity. I needed more data. And so the data sphere is being smaller, lighter, and cheaper. I was able to get more of them. It's all, you know, it's all about allocation of resources. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I was able to, to put a lot more data points all over the stage. Right. Um, now, a segue to that, the movie I did before this, which has not come out yet, I don't know if I can, what I can call it, but uh, I worked with a very big gaffer, and he mixed uh, tungsten with data stuff. And these Unity boxes were absolutely perfect. You can name the gaffer, probably. Well, it was, yeah, Mike Bauman. Okay, sure. And, uh, but the movie hasn't come out yet. It was a Paul Thomas Anderson oh, movie. Oh, I know what movie that was. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I never know. <laughs> we'll, we'll say later yeah. what that was. But, yeah. but uh, he, event, in the beginning, because these were just coming out, we were putting a 100-100 splitter with a PDB and a and a 6x2.4. Uh, uh -huh. They were dragging out two boxes. And so I called you guys. I said, hey, how, you got to give me a couple of Unities. And sure enough, showed up, and it was like... Perfect. Boom. You know, they can do it all from one box. And and tell me about Unity. Were, were you part of making the duplex uh, 20 amp breaker and being able to handle a 2.4K and a 1.2K? Was that something that was your idea? Yes. I don't remember. 
Yeah, yeah. That was your idea. I, uh, because you know we are we are reaching the point where we're getting a lot of uh, of uh, twenty amp LED lights. Mm -hmm. you no, know, two K LED lights. Uh, Sky Panel three sixty is a perfect example. And there's some other lights from Cineo. So you know in order to to distribute and use the switch and all this beautiful stuff on there, you know it needed to be able to handle twenty amps. And uh, you know it sort of defeated the purpose if you had to have two different boxes, right? It's not a unity anymore. No. Yeah. You know one of the things that I struggle with as the sales guy here is that. It's a complicated box and it's scary to people and mm -hmm. especially to the old school rigging gaffers, you know, they're like, oh, it's too much, I, I, you know, and so maybe you can address like the, the simplicity of the box or the complexity of the box, however you would like to characterize it. Okay, you know, so the, the old days was all about power. That's all we did. You had power and then you had a dimmer drop. So you drop a 1200 amp distro and you would drop a, a socket pack, sometimes two or three in a distro box, way more than you would ever need. Uh -huh. But for some reason, we would only only rig the data we absolutely needed, and I never understood it. You know, you would rig one universe of DMX if you needed one universe, but you would never do that with power. You would never go, oh, we're going to do one 10K, so I'll only rig 100 amps. And so we, there was no buffer zone in, in data, and it becomes sort of a nightmare. You know, a gaffer could ask for 20 sky panels, and all of a sudden, well, I only have one universe ran. Well, what are you going to do? And so I think a lot of it's just changing people's minds and realizing that, hey, give yourself a buffer. Have more than you need. We don't mm -hmm. need to utilize every single port on here and every single outlet. But you have it there, and that way if you need it, because things will change and come up, and it's always there for you. You know, instead of hanging a socket pack and all this other stuff on a corner of a set, I could put one of these boxes. And now, no matter what set deck, first unit, or anybody shows up with, it's handled. I don't have to worry about it. So that's on the power side, though. But yeah. I think some of the guys get freaked out, especially with the GUI, and they're like, oh, am I an ArtNet? Am I doing SACN? Mm -hmm. Talk about that a little bit, because, you know, this is a dimmer, mm -hmm. and I understand, you know, out in the world, this is an expensive a weekly rental on a dimmer. Mm -hmm. I totally get it. You know, this basically for us is about six of our SKUs. It's a PDB-10 dual universe. It's a PDB-12 because of the switchable channels. It's mm -hmm. a... It's a 10 by 1.2, it's a 6 by 2.4, it's, it's all of those things. An unmanaged switch, there's a lot of things going on here. Mm -hmm. And they say, well, we don't really need all those things, we just need one of those things. Mm -hmm. And production doesn't want to pay for it. I mean, that's, that's, that's sort of the argument. And what you're saying, what I'm hearing you say is, something's going to come up it's on set. And you're going to be like, golly, I wish I had a, an optus splitter right now. Yep. And then boom, you have an optus splitter. Exactly. You're, you're going to, I mean, your set deck's going to show up with an IKEA LED light. That's on the dimmer side. First unit's going to want to, all of a sudden, there was a practical there, and now all of a sudden they want to put a sky panel there. So now you need to, you need a hot power outlet instead of a dim outlet, and you need data to go to it. It's just, I mean, the, the, that's just how the industry is. It's so fluid and so changing. And uh, I know most gaffers like to try the newest things, and this, this box will power it. So right. you don't have to worry about whatever the DP read in Cinematographer Weekly or right. whatever new light wants to show up to set. It doesn't matter. You know, Kevin Lang used to always tell me, he used to rig gaff when I, when I was the first unit best boy. And I'll go, Kevin, why do you rig all this extra four at? He goes, so I know no matter what happens, you're good. And I can sleep easy at night. Right. And that's like what this is to me. This is I know I can sleep easy. Right. When this box is on the set, I'm not going to get a phone call. Hey, I need data. Hey, I need Ethernet. Hey, I need this. It's there. You've got everything you could possibly need. So how do you convince the UPM or the production manager or whomever, hey, look, I know this isn't a $100 a week box. This is this is a $500 a week box. How do you say, I need that? Well, I mean, you, you like you just said, you took it the five, the five boxes it takes the place of. So mm -hmm. it's cheaper than that. Um, and it's all about production time. You know, that's the thing. My goal is to shorten the time from when the gaffer calls the light to when it's on and the, and the board op controls it. And if you're setting 50 to 100 lights a day, and it's taking you, you know, six, seven minutes to get each light powered up, dated, and plugged in, that's a long time. Right. Now, if I can, if you can cut that down by a minute or even 30, 30 seconds, you're saving production a huge amount of time. Well, when Tom Cruise is $100,000 a day or whatever his rate exactly. is, he's not waiting around for his Kino flow to come up. I mean, right? <laughs> yes, it's very true. And then, you know, and that's the other thing. Things are, and you know, the color coding is something I love. I'm a huge fan of color coding. Uh, Why? Why do you tell I, me about that? I just, it's such an easy, simple visual indicator to see from far away where someone can tell, hey, this is working. Hey, that's wrong. Hey, that's not the right color. And it, it just, it's, it's, the nature of set is that it's, it's a chaotic place, right. you know? And people aren't always reading and looking. But color is something that instantly registers to your eye. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no ignoring. It's how we drive, you know, brake lights, all that stuff. You see the color. You can see it from across the room. You can see it in a dark room. 
right. you can see it anywhere. You see that color and you know that you plugged it in the right area. Right. And you know that it's working. Now, are you using your centennas? Are you are you cord color coordinating your centennas and your satellites with your universes on here or not yet? We have a lot of wireless traffic. Mm -hmm. So we, tr we, we tend to stay away from wireless. Mm -hmm. Wireless is sort of a last resort mm -hmm. for us. Um, that we, you know, we shoot on that big volume I think everybody's seen with the video panels. And it's kind of like a Faraday cage. So it's sort of just... Every, nothing really goes into it. It's and then between sound and video or, or remote camera heads, there's just not a lot of room for lighting left. And uh, you know, we're also, mean in the 2.4 gigahertz spe spectrum, yes. you're like, look, vi Video Village is getting pushed 4K to to the Video Village, yes. and and uh, uh, the focus puller is using a wireless device to mm -hmm. pull focus and sounds at 900 megahertz, right? I mean, yeah. that's what you're talking about. Yes. That bandwidth is getting full. And we're also near LAX. We're right next to LAX, and we're all right next to Northrop Grumman. And mm. so I don't have it uh, on great authority, but you know, the, the, what we seem to believe is that they have quite a bit of wireless traffic themselves going on. I see. And I know a lot of uh, just home modems, there's actually, there's actually huge bandwidths that are reserved for military radar that you can use as long as you're nowhere near military radar. And I believe those sections are totally lost to us. I see. Because of our proximity to the airport. I see. And our room. I got it. So, are you using this box up high? Or are you putting it on the floor? Or are you putting it at? Tell me where you put it. Are you putting it at the at the distro? Or are you putting where? Is it a whip? What what, what is there's it? There's one. There's a whip on every stage. I call it the uh, O crud box. So tell people what a whip is that might not know. So a whip is like a hundred foot piece of cable. It can be any length, fifty to hundred feet, mm -hmm. and uh, it basically can drag it into set. Okay. And so oftentimes, you know, because we're doing so much digital stuff, the number one thing we do with digital when you're doing digital environments is you need to mimic real world things. Mm -hmm. And so we'll often have like a big, soft, sort of interactive push, whether we're flying through space or we're feeling an explosion or something like that. So what we need is we need a lot of lights that have a lot of different channels so they can do, they can undulate and do different things. So this is like the box to do that because you can take 20 lights and you can all plug them into this box. Mm -hmm. And you can, they're all data hungry because they're all pixel mapped and, sure. you know, they all take 300 channels. And so this is kind of like that box. And then rigging wise, on sets and points, I like to rig these around the sets. So when first shooting needs to add a light or change something, they've got power, they've got data, they've got anything they want sitting right there. And that, that to me is the best part is that no matter where they're adding light or what they're doing, I know that all these open ports and things are there for them. Has anyone come to you like a UPM and said, wow, I was wrong, I, I didn't want to get that and I'm so glad we did because, man, you're killing it, we're saving time. Is there any is there any kind of stories that you may have of that? I mean, because recently yeah. we, we got a letter uh, a long time ago, we saved it, that a UPM was really not into it and uh, uh, Rat Pack's a long time ago and mm -hmm. we saved them a ton of time in rigging because it's a quiet dimmer and they didn't have to run soccer packs out to the dimmer room. And it took them a minute to adopt the new idea. And so that's what Innovative is trying to do with Rat Pack Dimmers, Rat Pack Controls. We're trying to be creative and innovative and push forward better, newer, faster ways to rig. Mm -hmm. I mean, tell me about, has that been your experience? You know, the lighting has done such a quantum leap nowadays, uh, whereas production managers used to know what a baby and a tweenie and four out was. They sort of are in the dark with this stuff. They know, kind of, they know what it does, but it, it, the, the, the savings there isn't quite probably as obvious to them as it is to us. Um, I, I have done like, here's this way to do it, and here's that way to do it, and they, right. oh yeah, do it the new way, it's much cheaper. Um, you know, I have sort of a, a hands-off UPM on this show. So, uh -huh. um, you know, the thing is, I say, like, it's, it's cheaper, it, it costs about what a sky panel does to rent, you know? Right. So it's like, we, we use about 80 sky panels per rig, so honestly, the infrastructure is negligible. Sure. You know what I mean? It's not even a part, it's not even a, uh, a blip on their radar, so to right. speak. Because it really, in my opinion, for what it does, it's not that expensive. You know, um, I did have a, a fight with a rental house where we wanted something like this, and they said, oh, well, well, we have the parts. And I said, okay, well, I need an office splitter, I need a switch, I need all these things. And they, they came back to me and said, okay, we'll get the unit of these. What, why? Because once they added up, they yeah. realized it's, it, it, it was insane. Yeah. I was like, the well, rental rate was going to be more than what it would cost at the rental yes. rate for this. Exactly. I, I, need two, I need two transceivers. I need right. Two. So you have two universes of, of wireless. So mm -hmm. that's a supernova minimum, right? Yep. And then you have at least an op splitter. Mm -hmm. You have your node, which is eight ports. That's mm -hmm. it's a thousand bucks. I mean, right? So that those things just start adding up, adding exactly. up, adding up. Right. And, uh, you know, the, the UPMs, I, that's not their fault. It's just lighting is just so much more complicated than it's ever been. And partially part of my little crusade is to try to educate them so they understand that, you know, we're, this is, we don't get this stuff to, 
to spend money on right. stuff because it's faster and better. So you're educating. I, I hear you're doing a class tomorrow. Well, tell me about that. Uh, just through our local. It's a programmer's lab. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's a lot about rigging. Um, you know, a lot of guys in my position, the older guys, like my dad did it, they didn't ever want to know about this stuff. They would just hire someone else to do it. And it, it's becoming, the rig is the data now, you know, because the power draw for LED lights is so much lower than it's ever been that, you know, 90% of the rigging is the data infrastructure. Right. And so, on the big movies that you're doing, but maybe not necessarily the TV. Or are you seeing it even? I mean, of course, on Mandalorian yeah. or Star Trek or some of these others, uh, huge rigs, right? Mm -hmm. But what about TV or independent films? Are you you feel the same way? I do. I feel everybody wants the interactive lighting. I feel it everywhere I go. I did a small job. It just came out. Bliss on mm -hmm. Amazon. Mm -hmm. uh, Great gaffer on that. Nick Cott. Uh, it. Um, we still had you know multiple universes there, and even sure. even that was extremely low budget. Nobody that I even on the lowest budget, no one is pushing more than no one is pushing less than a couple of universes. I was somewhere recently and they were using sky panels for the translite. Yeah, I was like, what? Yeah, that's a seven thousand dollar fixture instead of using a ladder light or yeah. you know something crazy, right? Well, they don't want to pay, and for they want to pick, and they want to use the functions of the sky panel through the translite. Yeah, you can change the color, you can do right. all these things now, you can make different parts of the day, and nobody wants to pay for a generator on stage anymore. Right. You know, back in the old day, we would have megawatt generators outside the stage to supplement the stage's power. Mm -hmm. And now with LEDs, we no longer have to do that. And, uh, you know, part of that Hollywood love going green and talking about it. So that's one of the ways I like to do it. And so, you know, with LED lighting, you have to have the data infrastructure. It's the only well, way it works. And with the LED lighting, you know, I know LEDs don't dim very well. And, you know, that's one of the things that Rat Pack continues to consider as we move forward in our business is... You know, we're changing the name of the company from Rat Pack Dimmers to Rat Pack Controls because we're thinking, well, the dimming is really started starting to become part of the fixture. Yeah. You know, that's in the it's in the lamp. Mm -hmm. So, but nobody's really thinking about. They get these great, sexy, beautiful lights, but they no one thinks about well, how am I going to plug it in, and then how am I going to get the information to it exactly to, to manage it. Yes. And so it's ridiculous to buy these beautiful fixtures and not utilize them. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you how many times, you know, I've rigged shows where, you know, they try to do it cheaply. Let's just do one universe at every distro. And then, you know, a new set comes up and the DP is asking for 20 more sky panels. And now it's not, that's not something you can simply throw in unless you have a network. And you're doing, are you doing like sky panels, like in a soft box? All, yeah, soft all box, the time. all the time. And that's the thing, when you have the network and you go this route, it's infinitely expandable. Uh -huh. So it's like, you're always good. You're good to go. And the networking gear is actually cheaper than the DMX gear. You know, the right. economies of scale, as they say. Sure. Uh, and so in the long run, I, I honestly think, I mean, I haven't done a side-by-side, -side, but if I were to try to rig my show with DMX, it would be 10 times the price, easily. I would love to see the math of that. I would love to see a comparison between, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually rig this. You know, the, the man labor, the, the hours of labor, yeah. and, and, the, uh, and the actual cable rental, right? Yeah. That would be interesting. I think I, sh I think I showed you a video of my presentation of an old-school DMX rig up in the... Perms uh -huh. and uh, those huge bundles, and I showed you mine with the one cable. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. No waterfalls for you. Yeah, and then, even though this box looks more expensive, it's all the infrastructure around it is so much cheaper. And right. it's just being so infinitely expandable and changeable, it's just it's it's dynamic, like a set is, and it needs to be because everything changes all the time.